Hello, everybody. I am Drew Duncan. We are live, and the show is fired up. And I am brought to you in part by WBFR Block 50 Radio, which is online 24 7, 365 at block50radio.com. Plenty to get to. Obviously, we're going to be talking about the college football championship game from last night. We're going to be talking about Uncle Shea going DEFCON 3 on Jameis Winston. Tiger is no longer involved with Nike. We're going to be getting into that as well. Plenty to get to today. Justin Fields, is his time done in Chicago? We're going to be talking about that. The CFP working with the FBI currently for threats that have been happening with Florida State. Of course, this is something that's been ongoing, to be honest with you. This isn't exactly breaking news, so we're going to be touching on that a little bit later on in the program. What about Saquon Barkley? Is he done with the Giants? He was very clear about where he stands right now with the Giants. So we're going to be getting into that as well. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, it's all at Drew Duncan Radio. I'm wherever you're listening to podcasts. Take a device to play Fired Up by Drew Duncan. iTunes, iHeart, Google, etc. Wherever you're listening, I am there. And if you don't want to pay for any more podcast subs, head on over to the YouTube channel, The RL Drew Duncan, The Real Drew Duncan, where I do post entire episodes for free. I can promise you there won't be any ads, but free is free. And the only thing I ask is that you go ahead and hit the sub button for me. In the meantime, college football playoff last night. Michigan is your national champion. Look, here's the bottom line. When I talked about this game yesterday morning on the program, the thing that I brought up was simply this. The team that runs the football better will be the team that wins this football game. And in the first quarter alone, Michigan, or first half alone pretty much, Michigan 200 yards right on the ground. And look, I understand that Dylan Johnson got hurt on the outside of that football game, uh, but you still can't give up on the run. And one of the things that I talked about was especially against that Michigan front, you're going to have to run the football, wear them down, because you are going to want to play keep away. You're going to want to run a, a no-huddle offense but running the football, and they didn't do that. I said that chucking it 45, 50 times was not going to win you that football game, and that is exactly how it went down. Did you really think that you were going to be able to drop back and throw the football like that against that Michigan front? Look, Michael Penix Jr. didn't get sacked a lot in that football game, but you don't have to actually sack the quarterback to rattle his cage, force bad throws. Those guys on the front line were getting their hands up all game long, They were in his face all game long. He was nervous the entire time. It was honestly the worst that I had seen Michael Penix Jr. play all season long. And I mean that. Literally the worst game that I had seen him play all year long. And he's had a couple of tough ones. That one was definitely it. But I I think from an outsider's perspective, when you look at the coaching aspect of this football game, it should be very obvious That Michigan stuck with their game plan. They knew exactly what they wanted to do. And Washington looked confused from the jump. I mean, didn't they burn two timeouts in the first quarter on their opening drive alone, which, by the way, ended up in a field goal. A couple of bad throws from Penix Jr. in the end zone, and they couldn't get six. Now, I'm not saying that Michigan didn't play a hell of a football game because they obviously did. And it's a full four-quarter game. And even though Washington's defense stepped up into the third quarter, by the fourth quarter, there was just too much. Too many turnovers, not enough offense. You know, they were on the field all game long. They were getting ran through. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, this is not a difficult game to go and watch and say to yourself, one team was clearly better than the other. And Michigan proved that they were clearly the best team in all of college football. You know, one of the things that I talked about throughout the season was there were a lot of teams that hadn't really played anybody, but nobody was really setting themselves apart with true dominance. And at least even though Michigan really didn't have a tough schedule outside of the conference, and really there wasn't a whole lot in conference that was going to challenge them a whole lot, they were doing what they were supposed to do, and that was dominate football games. The reality of the situation is, They use their players to the best of their capability. 
They know exactly how to use what's in front of them. This has been a long time coming. Harbaugh is a winner everywhere that he goes. You know, it's amazing because for the longest time when he didn't win the Super Bowl and things fell apart in Frisco, people started coming. I mean, there were former guys that played with Harbaugh. They were literally calling him a bitch. They were like, that's why he's never won anything because he's a bitch. Literally, I remember that statement. That's why they said he never got a national championship when he was at Stanford even though he had turned that program completely around. And when they hired their new football coach, I said, look, it's going to be three to four years. That football team will be right back where they started. Let's not forget that when Harbaugh went to Frisco, he turned that football team around. They were not good at all. He took a lot of risk with Kaepernick because Alex Smith was playing pretty good. And when he went down, if I remember correctly, Frisco was a, what, 7-1 and football team? It wasn't like he needed to make the change, but he had the guts to make the change and then stand by his decision. And let's also not forget that first year, he didn't have an offseason. He didn't have spring practice. He didn't have a training camp. He didn't have anything because of the player lockout. They just started playing at the beginning of the regular season. He had no preseason. He had no way to evaluate his guys. Literally nothing to go off of. In two, three, what was it, two years, the team was in the Super Bowl. He goes to Michigan. Everybody makes fun of him. He can't win big games. They haven't beat anybody with a winning record. He can't beat anybody that's in the top 25. He can't get over Ohio State. He can't do this. He can't do that. He can't do this. He can't do that. And yet, all he does is win. Literally, as a coach, he has a winning record. Doesn't matter where he goes. Stanford, Michigan, Frisco. You wonder why the NFL wants to come calling again? You wonder why there's NFL teams? You you, you think he got demoted when he went from the NFL back to college? I'm not going to say that it's not, but look at the end result. This is a bottom line scenario that that group of kids, him and his brother, are both winners, and that's all there is to it. He's had the right people in place. Look at what happened while he was gone the first couple of games of the season. They won. Look what happened when he was suspended again for, what was it, another four games? Sharon comes in, takes over. They win. And they win one of the biggest games of the year, if not the biggest game of the year, Ohio State and Michigan. He has people in place. And he was very quick, very quick to point at Sharon. He he was on that podium for, what, a minute? Minute and a half tops? Hey, look, man, you know, it was a great win. I'm glad you guys want to talk to me. But here's the thing. Here's the hero of the, of the game right here, the guy who coached it. He's good for Michigan football. You know how easy it would have been for him to take credit? Yeah, you know, just, you know, it's all about getting the right guys in place. You know how easy it would have been up there for him to stand up there and and figure out a way to make it about him? But he never did. The bottom line to this season is Michigan was unhinged all year long. They got beat by a team that got annihilated in the championship game last season. That was not a good look for Michigan. Everybody laughed at McCarthy when he said, we are going to be back here. I'm not going to say that I haven't had my doubts about Michigan. But the bottom line is they proved that they were far and away the best football team in all of college. This is an unequivocal situation. They are the only team that can say that they beat Washington. And mind you, Washington played Oregon twice and beat them both times. And Washington's the only team that can say that they beat Oregon. It's a point blank situation. Michigan played the way that they should have played. Washington backed off, got nervous, put it on Michael Penix Jr.'s back. But you you can't do that against a defensive front that literally all they have to do is bull rush you. And then you're, you're too slow in between plays. I mean, watching Washington was basically like watching a team that liked to throw it a lot in the mid-90s. All right, we got to take a break. Plenty more to get to today, guys. Don't you dare touch that dial.